Uh, Pablo, you heard there what Brian said. I mean, try to put this move into context in terms of what we're seeing uh, in the crude market, breaking to new lows. It, it really does look like a downtrend for whatever the, you know, the reasons behind it. Well, oil has now erased all of its gains since the start of the war in Ukraine. So clearly the supply risks of you know, Russia perhaps trying to weaponize oil exports or additional sanctions, that has been overshadowed by demand side concerns about a global recession. Look, in the last 50 years, global oil demand has turned negative four times, most recently in COVID 2020. Before that, we have to go back to the global financial crisis. So it's very rare, but it's not unheard of. And as central banks seem you know, very much inclined to push the world into recession, you know, oil demand is, is not going to remain on skate. Right. So I, I guess the question is, if, if if it's fears of a decline in demand, as rare as that would be, uh, is there going to be a supply response? Are there things the market's overlooking on the supply side? I mean, I mean one of the arguments for why it's tough to fight against uh, soft demand is that, you know, an unburned gallon of gasoline today is not necessarily made up for later on when China reopens or whatever else happens. Well, so several things on the supply side will help keep prices higher than than they you know perhaps would be otherwise so one is the war is obviously not over and the european embargo on russian seaborne crude takes effect at the end of the year uh divestments by international energy companies from russia continue you know 80 international energy companies in russia and about 65 of those are in the process of divesting so that will have an effect on Russia's ability to to produce and export. And lastly, let, let's remember the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in the United States and analogous emergency stockpiles overseas have been utilized to keep the market, you know, well supplied since the first days of the war. Well, you know, clearly those stockpiles cannot continue to be used up forever. And if demand, you know, were to slow or you know, worst case scenario turn negative, then that will alleviate the pressure on governments, you know, from having to use mm -hmm. these stock markets. Where does it leave you with regard to the stocks in terms of what types of, uh, of names are well positioned now or have been maybe uh, punished a little bit too much given even where commodity prices are? So. Uh, Across the spectrum of, of the oil value chain, the producers, the, the service contractors, the pipelines, the refiners, all of them fundamentally are tied to the commodity. So we have to look at the futures curve. Right now, when we say oil is $80 a barrel, well, you look at the futures curve, it points downward, it's backwardated, you know, down to about $70 a barrel a year from now. Well, mm -hmm. our view at Raymond James is prices are going to be, you know, as we are today or higher over the next 12 months. So that's very different from the backwardation. So just on, on that alone, you know, we would be inclined to be buyers on the weakness because we do not envision oil going, you know, to 70 or, or even less as the futures curve is currently suggesting.